Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, Voyager Class Bludgeon. Um, in his bio, it talks about how um, there is two bludgeons, which I'm glad they explained that because I did not just want there to be two bludgeons. Um, the green armored carrier one and uh, the tank. Now this one is a nice representation of bludgeon, but this one's more accurate. Um, and in the bio, it talks about how he fought Whirl, this bludgeon, uh, when they were in the Master Metallicato set, and he was almost destroyed. So he went deep into the Southeast Asian jungle to recuperate, and he scanned a new form, which is a Type 90 uh, Japanese tank. <clears throat> and now he waits in silence. For, uh, oh, and he, and he also talked about how he was, you know, destroying just enough to attract Autobot Ironhide, or just Ironhide as it put, attention. And um, that would be Recon Ironhide, which I will, which uh, separate review for him. And um, <clears throat> attracted Ironhide's attention. Now he waits in the jungles, waiting to strike and kill his prey. You know, just like a bug or something. You know, like a snake. Um, one thing I don't like about these, like, katana swords, um, okay, it's really cool that the, that the small one can, uh, fit in here, and that, you know, it has, like, little mecha live gimmick, and it folds back up, and this one folds in to become part of the tank, but, um, the plastic is thin, or not thin, but, uh, not as strong as the actual figure, due to the fact of the, you know, safety issues, so this bends easily, See, mine's not completely straight right now, and I keep the katana in there for a while to keep it straight because it was all bent. So, um, you know, just want to watch out for that. Uh, the transform bludgeon. Let me just raise this up. What you want to do is put that up. Um, then detach the bits here. Take these back pieces like that and fold them back. Um, you might want to move that out of the way, that'll help. And fold those back, detach the, detach the front bits, and one other thing you need to do first is take the treads and, like, these pieces, most of the tread is made out of plastic, except for where you see that pin here, then it goes to actual plastic. This is rubber, and then it goes to plastic. So, it's decent. I don't like that it changes from rubber to plastic, but it's all right. Um, then you unpeg that, and unpeg that. Then you want to unpeg the hands and fold them down. Fold them out. Like that. Um, split them. And then fold it, fold them down, fold those orange pieces down. I like how there's there's like a minimal amount of orange in vehicle mode, and yet when you you'll see when I'm done with the transformation, there's a lot of orange in robot mode. You know, it, 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 the vehicle held, uh, you know, kept away the orange on of the robot very well. Now what you want to do is take that, fold it, see. It was back like this, and you want to just take it and fold it all the way. Then you want to fold the legs in like that. Turn that around. Fold that piece down. Fold out the foot. Fold that back. Do the same thing over here. And then, with a little bit of force, you want to push the waist up until it snaps into place, which it did not. Which you want to use a little, a lot of force. Well, at least on mine, you need to use a lot of force. Mine's just not wanting to stick right now. Okay. Then, well, okay, it's really not wanting to stay. All 
All right, I got it to hold for the for the for the moment. There it goes again. Hold on. All right. Just so once you get the, the uh, lower area to peg in <clears throat> the head area, um, you're just you are actually just about done. So, oops. See, and there it goes unpegging again. There, that's the best. It'll just have to hold for the review. See, now that's one of the major complaints I have about the figure. Look at that. See, does not like to stay up there. They do not know what the problem is. Um, I honestly want to say something now. <laughs> I do not understand what all the hype was about this guy. Okay, he was, I know, a big character, and this is the first technical time, and, you know, this is one of the, this is a really cool looking figure, and I, it is for display value. Now, for play value, it scores kind of low. Because, one, the katana is made out of really soft plastic, and if you play with it too much, it will stay bent. The chest doesn't like to stay pegged in, as you can see from my being mad at it um, and it just does not like to stand so it's it lost some points and even display display value to me and I was never a big fan of the um, the cartoon or not not the cartoon but the comic and uh, it, apparently it was aimed this figure was aimed more towards the comic uh, the comic people you know the, like like the people that used to read the comic, the Transformer comics when they grew up, etc. Um, and I, I did not read the comics when I, like the Transformer comics and stuff, and I don't really plan on it. So this really lost some value to me as well. But still, an overall pretty nice figure. It does have a little bit of a standing issue. It's some, just, look at that, it has to be, mine's wanting only to stand sideways for some reason. Let me fold up, let me fold down the foot. There we go. There we go. Um, it does, you have to get it at the right angle because the foot, the feet are tilted, so. Um, here he is in robot mode. I'm going to compare him to, uh, a, one of the Constructicons. I believe the tallest of the Constructicons, Long Haul. You can see Long Haul's more bulky and obviously taller than, uh, Bludgeon. Definitely more bulky because, you know, he's a samurai. He's not supposed to be bulky. Um, whereas Long Haul, he is. Um. Very sam samurai looking, you know, kind of it kind of resembles of a Decepticon version of what happened to Prowl, like Samurai Prowl. If he would have gone evil, you know what I mean? That would have that that's kind of what this looks like. And see what really actually takes it for me is when you when you end up having to take the katana out. Look at that, it bent by itself when it was when I had to take it out. So um, you can put the katana. Um, in this little section here. Looks pretty cool from the front here, but if you look from the side, it kind of looks like he stabbed himself or someone stabbed him. And um, you can position the top however you want, but this is just how I like it. Um, and you can take the little one, you can either attach it to like to the, the bottom of this, or you can put it in there. So he can be, you know, ready, willing, and able for any of his uh, weapons. So, um, but overall, honestly, if you are a big fan, if you're just a collector in general, this guy's a, a pretty immediate get for you. It's just my stupid opinion, you know, that does not matter. <clears throat> and, um, just saying that bludgeon doesn't really matter because I was, <clears throat> I did not, how do I say it, um, wasn't around, you know, I don't read the comics or anything like that. So I don't, I don't really know the fullest extent of Bludgeon, but you know, I think he's still pretty cool. He has a lot of display value for me, and a little, pretty, a lot of play value to me too. I just, you just have to learn your limitations with this guy. So, um, articulation-wise, like this leg's a little bit looser than it should be, but um, you can see there's a little bit mecha live gimmick in there. The head rotates, uh, arms rotate. They can rotate 360, but you know, can be hindered at points. Uh, no waist articulation, uh, feet can go forward and back, uh, two bits here, because you can see it bends here and bends here, so, um, pretty cool. So, there you have him, Mr. Master of Metallicato, who got his butt whipped at his own game, pretty much, um, 
Decepticon bludgeon.